Hey guys, let's talk about all the Space Marine tanks choices that we have in the Codex Space Marines, which ones you should include in your list and which ones you should probably avoid. So without further ado, let's dive right in. First contenders are the Predators, the Predator Destructor and the Predator Annihilator, both cost 130 points. It's the oldest Space Marine tank available and just looking at it gives me chills of nostalgia. There's a good chance that you have a couple of these in your collection if you've been in the hobby for a while. Destructor is the anti-infantry option of the tank which has the special ability which gives the AP1, extra AP1 to the guns when they shoot at infantry units, something like the Gladiator Reaper and Annihilator is the anti tank option which gives a reroll once for damage when you are targeting vehicles and monsters. They are considerably tougher than a Rhino with the toughness 10 they have which makes a big difference especially considering that things like Melta, Multi Meltas, Melta Rifles and Eradicators are strength 9 so you get a bit of protection from that. And obviously there are quite a lot of strength 5 threats like the heavy bolters that the Destructor has for example those are strength 5 so they would be wounding on 6s in this case. And you also get 11 wounds compared to the 10 wounds that you have on the Rhino. They're also the classical OC3 for all the Space Marine tanks and they move 10 which is a bit slower than the Rhino which moves 12. That's a reasonable profile for a tank considering that it's pretty cheap as far as tanks go and uh, the only thing that I would personally want it to have is the 2 plus save because that does really really hurt its survivability against uh, potential anti-tank threats which is probably what tanks are going to be targeted by in the first place. We are here to talk about guns mostly because these are supposed to be our shooting platforms that do damage to the opponent and Destructor has the rapid fire too so extra two shots when you are in within half range, gun with four shots base, strength nine, AP one, damage three so sort of an a buffed up auto cannon, something like a Halverine auto cannon, and two heavy bolter sponsons on the sides. Heavy bolter is a standard 5 1 2 profile, so strength 5, AP 1, damage 2, and sustain hits 1. That's not a twin link, that's two separate heavy bolters, so three shots each. Not a bad amount of shooting, considering that everything is going to be at extra AP, and AP here would be the most limiting factor. So if you need something to deal with infantry, that isn't bad. Annihilator, on the other hand, is one twin linked shot of the uh, Predator last cannon, which is just a last cannon with extra two points of strength and twin linked. Uh, so strength 14, AP 3, damage D6 plus 1, and also two last cannon sponsors on the sides. You can exchange them into Heavy bolters just there's no real reason to do that because there's no synergy with the reroll damage rolls of one rule then. And that is two shots of strength 12 AP3 damage D6 plus one as the last can should be. Obviously you can attach a hundred killer missile and a storm bolter to each but that is nothing to write home about. So in general my issue with Annihilator is the competition that it has because it does about five damage to a Lehman Rust tank so the toughness 12 two plus safe tough tank platform where a 30 points of gladiator lancer would do about 10 damage to the same target so you get double the output for just extra 30 points so i don't think that considering the breadth of anti-tank choices that we have available in the Space Marine book that you really would often want to run the Annihilator. The Destructor on the other hand is a bit more interesting because you do get a lot of infantry killing firepower for those 130 points. Not anything exclusive because 130 points is exactly how much a unit of Inceptor costs and that's a very different kind of a unit though does provide a similar amount of killing power for the infantry. The Destructor would kill about five Space Marines on the in the shooting phase and that is about the same amount as a Reaper would do. Gladiator Reaper that is. And Inceptors would also kill about four maybe five if you get a bit luckier usually about four Marines in their shooting phase but they will do it deep striking within three inches of your opponent's units which is very different though they will be easier to kill so that is give and take situation it depends on what you're trying to build. So my final score would be 3 out of 5 points for the Destructor because it does a thing well, uh, relatively well. So there is a reason to run him in your lists. Just there are other things that would do the same similar kind of thing reasonably well. And the Annihilator is just inefficient in my humble opinion. Correct me if I'm wrong. If you had great experiences with the Annihilator, please let me know in the comments. As always, if you're looking for help building your roster or your collection, check out the links to my Patreon in the description because I provide personal assistance for that there. Next are the trio of gladiators, the Lancer, the Reaper and the Valiant. The Lancer cost 160 and the other two cost 150 points. It's our most modern tank by 
satellite pump from the Space Marines. They were released just two years ago, I think. And they're all toughness 10, 12 wounds and 3 plus safe. So just one wound above the Predators we just looked at. Same move. And the Lancer is a monster vehicle hunter in this case. His rule does not depend on the on shooting at monsters and vehicles, but just the profile that, of the gun that it has will dictate you shooting only at them. And the rule it has is single reroll to hit wound and damage, so you can reroll either of these rolls. And you get a two shot very nice gun which is strength 14 ap4 d6 plus 3 damage at 72 inch range and with this suit of rerolls you will be getting quite reliable results against tanks i would highly recommend to never run lancer without a second one because only when you have two of these you're actually going to hit the statistics because with just two shots it's too likely that your opponent will roll something like a five up save and just trash a big amount of your damage or maybe an inverse save if they have that but with two lancers and obviously three is even better you are going to be doing that reliable damage that you are hoping for. The Reaper, on the other hand, is the anti-infantry platform because his rule is sustained hits two for the main gun, which is the 12-shot 601 uh, Gatling cannon, strength 6, six AP, zero damage one, with sustained hits, as I said, and twin linked with dev wounds. The idea here is that you get a lot of shots, you will roll and hit with most of them. You also get a couple of sixes so that you pop extra hits, and then you roll all those down and fish for the sixes to do devastating wounds. Plus, if without the sustained hits too roll, unfortunately, but you also get quite a few strength 4 AP 1 damage 1 Tempest bolter shots uh, that are on the sides of the tank. And lastly, the Valiant is sort of also an anti-vehicle monster one because you get plus one to hit against those targets, specifically for me, vehicles and monsters. And your guns are the two-shot LAS sort of cannon with strength 10 AP 3 damage D6 plus one. So you get more shots than the last cannon, the low lower range and lower strength and you also get four shots of the regular multi meltus with strength 90 before damage d6 and obviously the melta 2 rule here's what i think about using these the lancer is definitely the most unique out of all these three because you don't have a lot of that guaranteed damage capability among the space marine units where with the lancer you get the rerolls that really solve the problem of that big thing over there almost all other things require some sort of re rolls where lancers can really work independently yes you can run a bunch of inceptors that have twin link but they still will need oath to hit the target lancer doesn't and also the fact that profile is so one-sided is probably even a good thing for you because it will be easy to acquire targets for the lancer because it can really only do well against big monsters and vehicles so if you have that on the table that's going to be a target reaper on the other hand is great with stacked buffs so like for example if you run him in the Ironstorm with one CP Mercy's weakness you can get fives exploding and sustain hits for all of the guns and against any target and you can also get the lethal hits to go off on fives as well uh, because you can get the enhancement with your tech marine. In this case the Reaper can become extremely efficient and much more efficient for its points than pretty much the other two gladiators. Valiant is probably the most difficult option here because he tries to do all things at once. He tries to be a vehicle monster hunter and also an elites, anti-elites or anti-heavy infantry choice, but it doesn't do well against either. Because against Terminators and things like that, you really want to have rerolls so that you can get the maximum amount of shots onto the, their four plus invulnerable save. And against monsters and vehicles, yes, you're gonna hit on two, but you're gonna run into the toughness and nothing will be helping you so back when the oath of moment was a full reroll to wound and when the index was released that's when valiant was really a brilliant choice because you could run it or run several of them and then reroll all those wound rolls against the selected target and then you would get the efficiency you're looking for in this case i'm not sure that he really does output as much as he costs still he is far from being bad don't get me wrong especially if you run him in the artist where you would get at least some rerolls. So my final score would be 5 out of 5 for the Lancer because he's just awesome and uh, really one of few things in the Codex that can do what he does. 4 out of 5 for the Reaper because of the potential that he has and also the fact that he does do well against infantry. And 3 out of 5 for the Valiant for now. Next is the Whirlwind. So the only indirect fire tank that we have. It costs 180 points and has the same defensive profile as the Paratus that we looked at just a few minutes 
months ago. As any good indirect profile, it has the place in any list because indirect is just very powerful 40k mechanic that allows you to bypass very strong things like staging your units behind ruins. If you can get to the units that are being staged behind a ruin, that really screws up all the plans that your opponent might have. The gun that it has is a nice T6 plus 3 shots hitting on 3s at strength 8, AB2 damage 2 with blast and it also triggers a battle shock test for the infantry that you hit. Current price is the biggest problem of the whirlwind because it's very restrictive. 180 points is just a few points shy from a Vindicator and that, as you will see, is a very different breed of a vehicle already. So in order to get reliable damage on something like a 5-man Intercessor unit, you would need three of these shooting at the same unit all at once. That's without any external buffs, of course. That becomes super expensive really, really quickly. Being in the Iron Storm would really help the whirlwind because you can combine a lot of those re-rolls that you get from the detachment plus you can combine the mercy's weakness as well and also if you want to run whirlwinds consider trying storm speeders because you can get our extra ap that will mitigate a part of the uh, indirect fire penalty and also you can get plus one to wound that will really help the strength eight that whirlwind has but other than that you're almost always going to be better off currently just by paying for the inceptor squad because you can get essentially a similar kind of damage anywhere on the board just by dip striking them within three inches of an opponent's unit. So final score, three out of five points. Next are the pair of Repulsor and Repulsor Executioner. They are sort of a primary equivalent of a land reader, but not really. The regular Repulsor costs 190 points, the Repulsor Executioner is 210. Actually, I like to think about them as more of a Repulsor as a Rhino on steroids, where Executioner is like a Razorback on steroids. That, I think, is a more accurate representation. Repulsor has the same capacity as the regular land reader, normal land reader, which is 12 models, except in all the keywords so you can run gravis there centurions there terminators there whatever you want executioner is similar six models like the impulsor but the impulsor doesn't accept those special keywords where the executioner does don't know how that works in gw mind but i'm sure they have some explanation for that both are toughness 12 16 wounds so the same parameters as the land reader but they lack the two plus save which i think is a big mistake for the GW, I think they should just increase the price of these and make them 2 plus safe because they just look stupid without the 2 plus when something like a Vindicator has 2 plus and they don't. Even the Nemesis Dread Knight of the Grey Knights has 2 plus safe and these huge monstrosities don't. In terms of guns, they are packed with a lot of them and they were very weird back in 9th edition, 8th edition. There was just a lot of those guns and it was very difficult to remember what exactly you're going to be shooting at. Now they simplified it a bit. The Repulsor has a choice between two shot 10 3 the d6 plus one uh less fusil or whatever the name is and 12 shots of 601 dev wounds so without the twin leg that's the gatling cannon second choice you make is between one shot 12 3 d6 plus one twin link gun which is like a sort of twin link glass cannon and a twin heavy bolt you also get just a ton of strength 4 ap zero damage one shots and the executioner has the same gatling cannon as you can have on repulsor this is the 601 one dev wounds 12 shot one and you also get a choice of two big guns which the uh, first one is it looks very impressive it's strength 16 ap4 damage d6 plus four uh, sort of like a buffed up uh less cannon of the gladiator lancer or the second choice is just a redemptor dreadnought plasma so nine four three d6 plus one shots on the overcharge and it cannot change the twin heavy bolter into the last cannon like the repulsor can so you are stuck with the heavy bolter and just a bit less of those 401 shots repulsor has a cool ability for your shooting units where when something is charging an adeptus astartes unit that is within three inches every model in that unit is within three inches of the repulsor the repulsor can suck that unit back into it which really helps well to defend your shooting and sometimes melee assets it's very very annoying when you are a melee army playing against that i personally had this done to me when i was playing gray knights and believe me that was not pleasant the executioner on the other hand has a plus one to hit ability for targets that are below half strength which there is a lot of hoops to jump for just plus one to hit if you're playing the executioner in the iron storm where you at least get some rerolls you might get some efficiency from that but it just goes to be very painful to see that a very very well useless rule in most cases on the data sheet especially when it has such a cool name executioner you're expecting something really 
um, deadly there, but all you get is plus one to hit sometimes. So considering you can combine the reactive movement with the ability to get the unit back into the repulsor, I think its score would be a three out of five because you can get some nice shenanigans there, like for example, when you're playing Firestorm. Executioner, on the other hand, is just a mediocre transport and a really bad tank. Well, bad in all detachments, but Ironstorm in Ironstorm is just okay. Next is the Vindicator. We talked about this guy a lot on the channel and it's a very good mid-sized tank that is also quite tough. You pay 190 points for each of them, but believe me, the price is worth it, especially if you're playing Iron Storm. You get Toughness 11, which is good because you get protection from Strength 10 threats and obviously Strength 5 as well. You get 2 plus save, which is most important because that allows you to have good save against high AP threats like Malta or Last Cannon, obviously even better in cover which you should be in cover and you get 11 wounds which is one shy of the gladiators move nine which isn't bad but obviously slower than the regular tank by one inch it's still enough to get where, where you need to go especially again if you're playing iron storm and can advance and shoot or gladius for that matter in the death doctrine biggest limitations you probably don't want to start this tank all the way back in the corner of your deployment zone because then it will be really hard for you to get range and line of sight until maybe turn two or three especially if you're not playing against an opponent that is going to to come to you and most important part here is the gun and it's a very very good one it's strength 14 which is unexpected to in my opinion and it's great because it allows you to wound anything you can imagine on threes in terms of vehicles and monsters and everything in terms of heavy infantry on twos even alaris terminators with their toughness seven still will be wounding on twos and the ap3 is also great because even if something is has two plus safe and is in cover you'll still have to roll a four up to pass a safe successfully from a vindicator and d6 damage which that one is probably the worst part here because it's very very swingy that's why i said that in iron storm it's much better because there you can save that reroll for the damage roll and you get d6 plus three shots with blast so a lot of shots an extremely versatile gun that can do well against any type of target whatsoever well this is what i like about the vindicator if you run three of these in iron storm you can pretty much cover all your shooting needs in just this one unit Union. Well, obviously, apart from the horde type of shooting. True that the 24 inch range is limiting, but it's not terribly so. I'm sure you will be able to use him efficiently, especially if you're playing Gladius or Iron Storm. Siege Shield Rule is also great, providing you with the tagging protection so you can shoot that blast gun into combat and just not care about that, even bypassing the minus one to hit. All in all, five out of five points for this tank the three land readers the regular one the crusader and the redeemer the regular one is 240 points crusaders to 30 and redeemer is to 60. all of them have 16 wounds toughness 12 and two plus save profile so save is better than the repulsors and it's a great one land reader is never easy to deal with no matter how you look at it and you need specialized tools to crack it open I'm not saying it's unkillable but it is a uh, tough not to crack move 12 for the crusader and the redeemer and move 10 weirdly so for the regular land reader which i have no idea why it has a 10 inch move supposedly the capacitors or the energy reactors whatever for the last cannons take up so much space that it makes the land reader two inches slower but i don't believe that i think it's like a mistake that they just decided not to correct regular one has 12 model capacity like the repulsor the crusader has 16 and the redeemer is 14. Uh, the redeemer one is probably the most important one because it allows you to get two a unit of six gravis or whatever that takes up two spaces two slots each and also a character with them crusader allows you to do that plus another character so if you want to run something like i don't know a unit of gravis plus a captain plus a biologist you can do that with the crusader in terms of the armament the land reader regular one has four last cannon shots and just the regular last cannons without any twin linked or so and the twin heavy boulder the redeemer has a twin assault cannon instead which is better significantly and also 2d6 plus 6 shots of strength 6 ap2 damage to flamers which is why it's so good and crusader has just a ton of strength 4 ap0 damage one bolter shots which makes me sad because that's just not gonna do anything to anyone obviously you can stack a whole bunch of buffs on that and probably do some damage but 
imagine those, those same buffs with any other profile like the redeemer for example it's probably going to be better they all share though the most important and powerful ability and that is the assault ramp allowing you to disembark models after the land reader moves and still charge that gives your units inside incredible speed essentially giving terminators a 15 inch move instead of a 5 inch move if you consider the 3 inch disembark of course yes you trade the ability to go through ruins there but if your land reader is going and as my friend Spencer says, hey, diddle diddle straight through the middle. It doesn't really matter because you shouldn't have a ruin right in the center. So my problem with the regular Land Raider is the 10 inch move because you are paying for the transport capacity here mostly. And just not having those two extra inches is going to mean a lot. The, the Crusader just has problems in terms of output and the Redeemer is the king of them all. So therefore my score is going to be three for the regular Land Raider, three for the crusader and five out of five for the redeemer you can probably if you are looking for a very specific list you can probably go up a point for the regular land raider if you get enough buffs for those lost glass cans like in the iron storm for example where they can actually start doing damage and lastly the razorback so the weird sort of half tank half transport it costs 95 points it's essentially a rhino with a twin last cannon or twin heavy bolter on top and less capacity it fits only six models inside instead of the 10 that the rhino fits and also moves 12 and it has the same defensive profile it has an ability to give full rerolls to wound for units that disembark from it this turn against a unit that you've shot with this razorback so there is a combo probably a valid one with devastators that are running multi melters and something like that where you move the transport uh, then disembark them and then shoot the transport then shoot the devastators and have full rerolls to wound which that will make a difference for the strength 9 multi melters the package costs 215 points for that so it's not that expensive for five marines plus the transport other than that to be honest i don't see any good combinations where you would actually want a razorback because if they are the rhino and the razorback they are limited in terms of the models they can fit in you cannot run tacticus there you cannot put phobos there you can only put firstborn guys there and that really makes things very hard to manage yes potentially you can do something crazy like uh, the death company with the inferno pistols and then you give those pistols full reels to wound with the razorback but that's essentially trying to squeeze the razorback into the list instead of it nicely sliding into space in that list plus honestly the output that you get there is not impressive at all the one single last cannon shot with twin links is not going to do much and uh, the same goes for the twin heavy bolter shots and you're paying 20 extra points for that uh, compared to the rhino and four less seats again so you cannot run like a full 10 man unit so my score would be three out of five points probably closer to two out of five if you're not going to be running the devastators which tanks are your favorite ones which ones do you run in your list i would love to hear that in the comment section below and thank you for watching i'll see you next time